morning. And welcome to our Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday service. Now, I'm going to draw your attention to the note on the top of page two, because I know Episcopalians don't like to be surprised by anything. They like their service in order. This Palm Sunday liturgy, however, is very different from other services. We're gathering here, and we will wave our palm branches as we process to our seats. Also, there will be no sermon, and that is because of the extended reading of the Passion after the communion. So please remain seated during the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, until standing is so indicated. And then this service ends in silence as Holy Week commences. Our service begins on the top of page three. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God, of our salvation that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Luke. After telling a parable to the crowd at Jericho, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem, when he had come near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied. There is a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of the power that they had been seen saying. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, when he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way, let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together in unison. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility, mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Christ Jesus was obedient until death on a cross. And exalted by God, he continues to plead for all humankind. Let us join him in prayer for all our brothers and sisters, saying, Father, we place our lives in your hands. Lord, hear our prayer. Establish peace and friendship among all Earth's peoples. Let violence give way to accord. Father, we place our lives in your hands. Renew your church's longing for your reign of justice. May Christians work together to establish what is right in your eyes. Father, we place our lives in your hands. Grant a share in Christ's exaltation to all who share his degradation, especially to those whose poverty and helplessness are exploited by the powerful. Father, we place our lives in your hands. Heal the wounds which crime has inflicted on our cities and help our judges and lawmakers to fashion a society based on trust and respect. Father, we place our lives in your hands. Open our eyes to the sins we have committed. May our repentance lead us to seek forgiveness and restore us to the paradise of your presence. Father, we place our lives in your hands. We give thanks and pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially according to our parish cycle of prayer, Jean Kellerman, Winnie Keolanui, Tom and Jovan King, and their ohana. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dan, Hank, Betty Jo, Susie, Kadim, Addy, Michael, Corey, Adrian, Morgan, Jamie, Natalia, Amali, Jasmine, Bill, Joseph, and all those who we name now, either silently or aloud. We pray for the nation and all in authority, protect all men and women who serve our nation in faraway places. We pray for the people of Ukraine, for all who support Ukraine, and for the hope of peace. We pray for all those who have died, especially Ed DeLong, that they may find eternal life in your loving presence. Father, the prayer of Christ brought forgiveness to those who crucified him, and the prayer of the thief brought him a place with Christ at your side. Hear the prayers we now all make to you and sustain your people in their need. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our crucified Lord. Amen. And standing, seated, or kneeling, as is your desire, uh, let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.
and please be seated. I have wanted to do this at the announcement moment uh, for a few weeks now, but uh, many of the Mueller family have had lacrosse, etc. But I wanted to have Megan come up and Eric come up on behalf of the whole family. And we really want to thank you for so much that you do for us during the COVID period where we really couldn't sing for the most part. These two were our cantors. And then just a few weeks ago, uh, when it seemed as if Ina and Lilo were running a slight temperature and we decided that they would not come to the service, they decided that they would um, be cautious and not come to the service. Ina created a lot of pre-recorded music for us and we almost didn't notice, but something we definitely did notice was that with very little notice, Megan played a prelude and a postlude with less than 24 hours notice. And uh, we thank you for that. This is for you, Megan. And then this is for your whole family. All right, they are gift cards. And please, let's give them a round of applause. We really do appreciate all of your service and the service of all of your family. There's a mobile vaccine, vaccination clinic again today. Some of you are ready for your second booster. Some have already gotten it between, uh, yeah, some have already gotten it. Some got it here in between services and the, it, the clinic will still be here until 11 o'clock, the mobile clinic. And I've filled out my form. I just haven't gotten my shot yet. I've decided I'd wait till after this service. Um, Easter flowers, there's still an opportunity to donate for Easter flowers if you would like. And the staycation, you have until April 22nd to sign up. We have 32 people coming uh, so far, and that's a great number, but if you would like to come and haven't signed up yet, please be sure to do so. You go on to our website and the sign up is really pretty easy. April 29th, Friday afternoon to Sunday, May 1st. There are also summer camp openings and I mentioned last week that we have, uh, let's see, at least four, maybe five kids from our church going so far. And so if you would like to sign up or um, if you have a child or grandchild in your family that would like to stand up, so sign up. There are also family weekends as well that you can take a look at. And May 14th now is our church yard sale. We do have a date now and you can read about how that works. Next week, of course, is Easter and we have a Maundy Thursday service at 7 p.m. here. We have a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. Uh, on Friday that will be primarily uh, organ presentations on the meditations of the cross. It will be very special, different. You will also have an opportunity to have receive the blessed bread that was blessed the day before. Uh, the tradition is that we consume all of the blessed bread and wine before the Easter Vigil and at the Easter Vigil and Easter Sunday morning, everything that we consecrate is brand new as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. The Vigil is a gorgeous service. It's at 7 p.m. on Saturday night. Please remember about that. And then Easter Sunday, we have our two regular services but uh, we ask, and I asked first service, and you guys mostly will be here at the 930 service, so that's great. Please stay for the service, and afterwards we will have a breakfast prepared by some of the people of our church, the volunteers of our church. We will hunt for Easter eggs, and it will also be a very nice bon voyage 
for Joanna Witt, who's been a member for 60 years and is moving to California. I don't know what she didn't like about Hawaii that she's moving after 60 years, but we will have special words of bon voyage as she goes off to a new adventure. And let's see, birthdays and anniversaries. I have Linda Bruckner on the 12th, yes? Unfortunately, well you start, at some point you start going backwards, so that works well. And then Isabel um, Bowers on the 15th, and Anna Mearing on the 16th, and you have someone. Oh, I have. Today's you, you have many. So this week we have my sister today, Ginger, then my niece Heather, and nephew Gunner. And there's somebody else on the 13th, but I can't, I'm drawing a blank. So happy birthday, <laughs> on, whoever, it whoever it is. Somebody special too. Does anybody else have birthdays, Thanksgivings, anniversaries they would like to let all of the family, the Ohana know about? Um. <laughs> it's my mother's birthday today. Congratulations. <laughs> And do, oh, I'm sorry. this is for my beloved sister-in-law and Elizabeth Lentz Hill's beloved Aunt Jane Lentz in Gambier, Ohio, whose birthday is Wednesday. All right. Let's do the community prayer that is on top of page 8 in the book, in the bulletin. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase, and bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we wish people happy birthday and congratulations in Hawaiian. Haoli la hanau a ho mai kai.
two quick things. One, our offering bowls are at the front and at the back. And for uh, those who may be visitors with us today, we use intinkered wafers for communion. Please come up the outside aisle, return to your pews through the center. If you would like a plain wafer unintinkted, uh, please let Javon or me know. If you would like a blessing, just come with your hands crossed over your chest. And uh, we also have gluten-free wafers if anybody needs or wants those. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and, and good and joyful to give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he reveals your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Christopher and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ 
and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. We take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
as we are finishing up a Holy Communion and before we go to the Passion, I just wanted to lift these things in prayer and ask if they belong to anybody who is here today. Anyone? Yes? Okay, they'll be here in our lost and found. A polycaco. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The assembly of the elders of the people rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and to the crowd, I find no basis for an accusation against this, against this man. But they were insistent and said, When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him, sent him back to Pilate. And Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. 
This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting. A third time he said to them, But why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and released. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed, prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wish. As they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, <coughs> There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus replied. Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what he had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered here for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. The service has ended, and our observance of Holy Week has begun.